I like the fact that Kibler just identified his list of 10, where he's like, nope, these are these are actually just the best, and I'm going to run them all across. It makes it seem like there's more method to the madness. So I got to I gotta say I'm voting for Kibler. Yeah, personally, right. I've got to give the edge to Kibler. I mean, this is he's already won a challenge stone. He's, he's very familiar with deck building. He's been doing it for well over a decade in Magic, and what a hand. Wow. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a, a Dragon's the type of deck where if you have experience building it, then you know the strengths and the weaknesses, depending on the class, exactly the way that you want to build the deck, which support cards you want. So uh, I'm going to give him a bit of an edge, but it definitely is anyone's game. Ma's an excellent deck builder as well. So Yeah, Kibler has an excellent curve here with the North Shire into the Worm Rest into the Fiola. And I mean, even if you have to play a four mana, two, six, considering a lot of the cards you're potentially going to draw, again, are like a Maz's hand, eight mana. So it, it can be a little bit difficult. A Maz pushes with a Fugin, which is one of the best cards you can possibly have against Priest. But because we know that both these players are playing the fugin Stalag combo, often this can turn into a liability if uh, Kibler ends up being the only one drawing Stalag. Absolutely, but I mean, that is a turn two, four, seven minion against Priest. That is going to start cleaning up Kibler's board unless he decides two potential to... potential Divine Shields yeah. as well. Yeah, so he could play the Fiola and start or, or setting up Divine Shields on it next turn, but he's going to decide to just keep Wormrest Agent alive, which mm -hmm. I like this play a lot more. He's got the, no, uh, sorry, the Northshire Cleric in play that can start drawing him cards if that starts bumping in. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. He's going a little bit more all in, all in with it. He knows he has a second dragon once he's drawn the Deathwing for Twilight Guardian, so he can uh, expect to play that next turn. Doesn't need to save that shield to play with the Fiola. Well, I wonder if uh, Amaz is going to use Mulch. Oh, Amaz ends up drawing Illidan there. Um, he can play that card, but it seems a little bit out of place right now. Yeah, I mean, that 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 is quite a curve. That could have been a whew, turn one wild growth, turn two Fugin, turn three, or sorry, is it Stalag? I always mix them up. Um, Stalag is the one that always dies to Big Game Hunter. That's that's okay. the rule. Okay. Yeah, so that's Fugin. Fugin is the good one. Fugin is actually a great card. If Stalag was just a little bit less horrible than he actually is, I think I think this combo would see a lot of play in competitive Hearthstone. Uh, actually, Zixo won a tournament, no joke, with uh, with that in his Druid deck. He was running. Oh, uh... well, there you go. Yep. Yeah, but uh, I want to point out Mulch is in there, and Mulch is one of those cards where, for this specific challenge, you're thinking, all right, so I Mulch a Ragnaros. What does he get that's better than Ragnaros? Like, this is probably a net positive. Uh, unfortunately... Wait, he mulched a Velen's, didn't he? He, he mulched... He did get Velen. He mulched a... Oh, worm, my. ...a buffed Worm Rest Agent. <laughs> okay. And got that's a not Velen. bad. I like that. Well, Velen's is one of the cards... I mean, it's just a huge, powerful, legendary minion, which is never what you want to mulch on. But um, in this format, it might actually I be difficult no for Kibler to actually play out all these threats. So maybe it's not as good as we, we, may, uh, we may think. I mean, for what it's worth, Mulch is one of the absolute best cards against Standard Dragon Priest as the Druid. You just need some way to get through the massive minions that Priest can develop. If they play a card like that Velen's chosen Kibler just drew, it's very tough for Druid to regain the board without removal like that. But on top of that, he's got the Sylvanas, which is also one of the hardest minions in the game as a Priest to deal with. Most of the time you're building a Priest deck, there's no room for anything like Iron Beak Owl. You need mm -hmm. to use your cards for solid minions and removal. So a card like that is just so incredibly effective. And I wouldn't be surprised to just see Kibler give up his uh, damaged Twilight Guardian here. I'm actually a little bit surprised that uh, Sylvanas made the cut on one end. It's a very powerful minion. We know players are probably not going to be able to fit Silence in their decks because the, the remaining 15 slots outside of the raid bosses, which they must have, you know, are so limiting. And again, Sylvanas is actually not a raid boss, at least as far as I understand uh, World of Warcraft. Um, but, uh, you know, Amaz thinks it's, it's powerful enough to play. My concern is I think a lot of players would just run as much, as much removal as they can possibly play. But um, silence removal, I guess, is pretty rare. Uh, Nixia there in uh, Kibler's deck. Uh, obviously, Dragon, so uh, very, very, uh, I guess, tempting for Kibler to run. But uh, I almost wonder if Onyxia is counter to what you're wanting to do, which is play a bunch of big legendary minions, because Onyxia obviously fills up the board. Well, this is quite a fuel of light man. I've lost to this combo quite a few times in ranked. Oh, yeah? Yeah, some people play that instead of Dark Cultist in their Priest decks, and uh, it, it definitely wrecks you if you're a warrior. Okay, well, Amaz is not warrior, so he's just going to wrap the shield off for one, but this shield's going to keep coming back as buffs get being drawn. Definitely, yeah. Well, luckily for Amaz, Kibler has played most of his buffs already, two power word shields, one Velen's chosen. So it's pretty safe from the Divine Shield aspect, but still, that's a massive minion, and Druid is definitely a class that has trouble with that. Yeah, we're probably about to see some uh, Light Bane on Light Bane crime. Unfortunately. Well, I think it's the only only thing that's going to happen here. Uh, Kibler basically has the choice between healing and playing a Twilight Whelp or just playing down a Prophet Velen. 
And uh, I think profit balance is probably a little better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you see this in competitive play a lot where players will just, e even if there's a play that is a little bit better on the board this turn, they'll almost always take the line of play that uses all of their mana. If you don't play Profit Bell in this turn, when do you really play it? You kind of have to get it out of your hand when you can. Mm -hmm. Especially in this format where there's no Big Game Hunter, which is huge. That card becomes so powerful without the threat of Big Game Hunter. It seems like Amaz has quite a decision here as well. He might have to trade his Fugan and Hero Power. Oh, it looks like he's actually pushing for some damage. This. This seems pretty risky here. Velens is an extremely explosive card, and Kipler has spell damage on the board already. Great. Oh, he draws a red black hand. That is that is a card that we uh, you really anticipated would, would be a game swinging card, and it absolutely is the best card in the game. In this you challenge, see, Kipler is actually just delighted to play that, and I, I want to go on the record that every single time I've been around Brian Kibler, at some point in hanging out, Brian Kibler reminds me how much he loves his gold and red black hand that he actually just owns and runs on ladder. So. Uh, he had a look of just pure delight as he played it down and destroyed uh, Ilden Storm Rage. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is the format here. The format is a little bit interesting. Um, in, in these preliminary matches, we're actually only playing best of three, but it is Conquest. So you really just have to win with any two decks. And, you know, it might be the case that Amaz's Druid deck just might not be uh, up to par, but he can lose this one, and he can win two with his other two decks. So uh, there's still quite a lot of play left here. Absolutely. I mean, it might even influence deck. Wow, look little at little. that one. Divine Spirit, <laughs> Inner Fire off Nefarian. But nice. is he facing down lethal? He is. Yeah. All right, Kibler's going to take it. Not quite good enough. Oh, man. Amaz was like one turn away. Yeah, Amaz, it felt to me like he gave the, uh, you know, okay, dragons are pretty good type of face back to Kibler's smile. You know, we had, we had some, some facial expression exchange there. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't challenge the Dragon Master with a dragon. That's how you quickly lose the game. Well, I do believe Amaz is running a dragon deck of his own, is he not? So you might actually uh, challenge the Dragon Master with a dragon. But will it work? That's the will question. Will it work? Will dragons actually hurt Brian Kibler? I don't think so. Um, so Amaz lost that one, but luckily for him, uh, that was Priest. That's out of the way now. It's Conquest format, so Kibler can't play that again. And I really mm -hmm. feel like that's just like, I mean, like you mentioned, Rob, it's got to be one of the strongest classes in this format. So uh, without the threat of that in the rest of the series, he can easily come back and win two in a row. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've really kind of agonized over this challenge. I've made tons of decks. I've, I've definitely scrutinized all the decks the players have made. And, and from what I've seen, and I think I've been wrong just about every time, that's the disclaimer. But from what I've seen, I, I, I feel like the Paladin decks really are the strongest in this format because whenever you have that situation where they have a big guy and you have a big guy, the action of giving a Divine Shield just gives you a free trade. And uh, it's, it's something people don't really think about because that situation is just never happens in constructed play. Um, and the, the strength of Paladin, you, you even have the board clears with equality. Yeah, you have uh, the answers of the Peacekeepers. And if you can ever just get to that stage in the game where each player is playing one big minion at a time, you're just going to win. So all you have to do is make it to that stage. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, even cards like Dragon Consort, all those support cards you just mentioned, you can fit those into a Dragon Shell mm -hmm. and still have a strong, proactive game plan of your own. So Now, uh, Kibler has that same game plan. I mean, we talked about uh, Paladin being my favorite, at least, but both Amaz and Kibler are both running Paladins. So maybe we'll see some of that here in game number two. And we do. Oh, Kibler's got Paladin, Amaz has Priest, two of the strongest classes most likely in this format. We, we haven't played too much, but you have Crypt. But, uh, yeah, it's a decent opening hand for Kibler. I like keeping the Shredder. You definitely want something to contest the early minions out of the Priest. Well, Double man. Peacekeeper seems like a strong Three opener, but it's, it's something you don't actually want to play in the early game. It's not, it's not a three drop, unless it has to be. That's a good point. I wonder, uh, did, did Kibler keep that, or did he redraw it after? I mean, maybe, maybe the card is just so powerful in this format that you want to be keeping it, you know? Uh, I think keeping it is, is reasonable, but uh, you have to understand, like, generally in, in typical constructed Hearthstone decks these days, keeping a 3-drop is okay because you probably have a lot of 1 and 2s in your deck, but it, this is not exactly the case. Oh, this challenge done with 10 raid bosses, it can get a little bit out of control. So Kibler here, Thanks. some people might be wondering, why did he make a minion well, and allow Moss to draw cards? Well, the reason Kibler did that is uh, for tempo's sake. Uh, he's basically expecting a Maz to have a three-mana minion there, something like a Dark Cultist or maybe one of the Light Banes. And, uh, you know, a Maz didn't have it, so it's actually worked out better for a Maz, but it's definitely not a bad play from Kibler to take that line of play. Well, here's one thing that a Maz does have. Because he's not playing Dragons, he's playing a few more situational Priest cards like Mind oh, Games. That's got to be good. Oh, oh that is good. 
Wow. And it's a 112. Wouldn't you know you read Brian Kibler's mind, and what's on Brian Kibler's mind? A dragon. So well, see, uh, it could have been better. It could have been a Ragnaros, right? Now it's just Mogushan Ward and Senior. Well, this is why you don't judge people for keeping out their Peacekeeper in the opening. Okay. The turn you're four Deathwing. Because <laughs> you're expecting the turn four mind right. games into Deathwing. Right, you got to play around it. Oh, well. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, we, you know, he just saw the one Elder Peacekeeper too, so I'll be sad to see that second one just immediately show up and force Deathwing to follow the rules. Yeah, he does. He does still have two extremely high health minions, and now with a light bomb draw, that that still secures his position in the game. I feel. Absolutely. I mean, Kibler has. Wait, wait. He can Volge in his own Deathwing to regain that 12 health worth of high attack minion. That it would be a pretty cool play, but you might want to save that to deal with a you know powerful minion from Kibler as That's well. Right. Oh. I kind of feel like now that uh, Deathwing is basically on, uh, I guess one uh, health minion clearing duty. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to see like a counter, like what's his kill count <laughs> by the end of the game, like. You make a dude, Deathwing kills a dude. You make a dude, Deathwing kills a dude. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, often when you when you do Peacekeeper a, a high minion like that, instead of it taking out two guys, it, it takes out like six or seven just because it, it looks like such a non-threat, but it builds up uh, a fairly gradual but valuable tempo lead. Yeah. Now, uh, Deathwing, you know, Deathwing's not as strong as he used to be. It's not good times to be Deathwing, but you know he's doing what he can. He's still trying to help Maz out. And... It's great in this format. Was no there ever a good time to be Deathwing? I mean, in World of Warcraft, you're just being hunted down the whole time. And... I think he took a nap for like three expansions, and nobody okay. was hunting him. So Ooh. I think that I think was like the a good time. The only time to be a Deathwing is when like on your way to being on the board by high fiving a Marmobot, right? That's that's about the only time. Yeah, to be or, or mind games in this case. I guess so. Well, no, it wasn't a good time though. It walked him right into an Alder Peacekeeper. <laughs> It's just never a good time. Uh, to be I think Deathwing's just happy to to be a part of things. You know, <laughs> he's just happy to be invited. Yeah. All right. Well, Kibler really has to deal with this Illidan Storm Rage threat because uh, if if he leaves it unchallenged, it's going to start spawning a crazy amount of two one. Uh, I think they're called Flames of Azanoth. Yeah, Flame of Azanoth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kibler also recognizes, though, you know, equality is one of his only spells in hand. Really, his only spell. And if he plays it here, they're pretty inefficient trades that are being caused. And he's wondering, maybe if I leave this Illidan up for a turn, is equality and later in the game a better play? It would let him develop a big minion this turn, deal with both halves of Pilot and Shredder. Uh, I don't mind this play. I actually like this a lot. That's going to set up a potential Thaddeus soon. He's got the combo down. Yeah, I think okay. he's just strong. I think that's a reasonable line of play to go, uh, to go for Thaddeus. I mean, even if you don't win the game, it's just cool to see Thaddeus. What I really like from uh, Maz's list is he's, he's just not satisfied with 10 raid bosses. You know, he's like, 10 legendaries, really? I'm going to put Sylvanas in all my decks. I'm going to put Emperor Tharson in my priest deck. I want some of my opponent's legendaries. Let's Ooh. play some mind games. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little greedy, but it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, why not? I like the strategy. <laughs> all right, well, that Illidan, only one health, but that is a big problem for Paladin. He's going to need a muster for battle or something soon, or a consecration. Let's see if Kibler can get that. And oh, he gets a cock hammer, which that's is fantastic. too bad. That's actually really good. You, I think you still would have to play quality though to, to just no, no, no. You just the board. You just cog hammer here. You take out the Illidan, take out the Emperor. Oh, I see. And uh, yeah, just develop a Shredder or a Lothab, whatever, whatever feels right in your heart. All right, Shredder well, goes the Shredder. The coin is very valuable when you're playing such big minions because the. The real problem with, with high mana cost minions in Hearthstone is you often need to do multiple actions in the same turn. So a card like Nefarian is really strong, but just because you can't play something else with Nefarian, it's a big problem. I think it's something that actually players noticed when uh, Scenarius took a little bit of a hit. I think Scenarius going, going from 8 to 9 mana suddenly made him like unplayable in Druid decks for quite yeah. some time. There's just not many things you do with uh, one mana as a Druid, so... Yeah. And you can naturalize. Well, now you have the Living Roots, but uh, we didn't have yeah, that a year and a half ago, fortunately. Oh. Uh, I want to point out here, Kibler had the option of playing Piloted Shredder, but he decided to use that coin, as valuable as it is, like you mentioned, and play a Lotheb instead. And the reason he did this is because right now he's winning on the board. That 7-4 is going to stop both minions from Amaz, and it has so much attack that Kibler's going to dictate what it trades into next turn. Mm -hmm. So he's made it so inefficient for Amaz to play a card like Shadow oh. Death, for example. He That's actually a really had the option to Vulgen and Lothab himself, actually. I thought that was a pretty clean option. But I guess Ragnaros has always been kind to Amaz, so I think that's, that's just Amaz's secret weapon. 
Yeah, but I don't think there was a bad hit there. That was a great board for Ragnaros. Do you think but, even the face hit was acceptable? I mean, yeah. I, I, Give him the six. It just can be hard to finish the game in this type of rule set, especially as a priest, I feel. You can always mind games into mm. Leroy or something, yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, I've uh, seen crazier things in Chash, though. I great. guess that could be the case. Well, equality comes down. Yep. Um, Killer's health is starting to get a little bit low, though, so... He gets the Thaddeus, though. Yeah. 11-11 is on the board. Man, it feels like it's been like a year since I've seen that on the board. Actually, no, Tavern Brawl this week kind of did the trick, didn't it? I just want to point out, this Deathwing has had his attack made to one and his health made to one. He's looking to use the saddest little Where's Deathwing Where's the silence? It would be amazing right here. That silence would reach. The silence would be at 12-12 again. Yeah. That'd be such a such a good time to be Deathwing for a change. Oh. And he is! Oh, oh, Deathwing's coming back! He's coming back in full power. Revenge of the Deathwing. Where's that consecration? <laughs> well, that would have been good a little earlier. <laughs> um, I feel like Ragnaros is really good here because Ragnaros actually triggers after the KT trigger. So um, hitting Deathwing with the Shredder and Ragnaros sniping the Deathwing is the only way you don't lose, unless the Shredder provides a taunt minion. Is, is that how that interaction works? I've never actually had it come up yes. before. Okay. Yes, it used to be the opposite, which made Ragnaros way worse than it should have been, and I believe the uh, guys over at Blizzard changed that around. Okay. I am also not familiar with that interaction, so might get to see it here, though. Yeah, not really so. sure. Oh, I don't think Kibler, Kibler wants to, you know, he, he feels like he's really far behind this game. He doesn't want okay. to show any more cards in his Paladin deck because it's a deck he's probably going to play again. And I mean, so far, Priest is just dominating. Priest is 2-0 in the tournament. We've seen Kibler take a loss in with Paladin, and we've seen Amaz take his loss in with Druid. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is best of three, but they have three decks, so Amaz will have the option to play um, his Paladin or Druid, or Kibler can play his Mage or his Paladin, but it is match point. And, uh, you know, this, this is basically the semifinals. You got to get in that finals. And the finals will be best of five. You will have to win with every single deck. Here at the Hearthstone World Championship of uh, Challenge Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Big deal. A lot of pride, a lot of bragging rights. Uh, obviously, a lot of these guys see each other fairly often. So being able to see Amaz and just continually remind him, like, hey, I beat you. You lost. I'm the best. Uh, very important to play for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think a lot of players uh, feel they are really good deck builders, but it's it's a skill that is left so unchallenged in a lot of ways in Hearthstone. It's 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 just easy to just you know use a deck that's really good and make it your own by changing a card or two. But you know having to work from the ground up is a skill that you you just don't see. And when you get to test it, uh, it's just so much fun to see how players approach it differently. No, it is a totally different skill set. And, you know, we've even seen in, you know, going back to the World Championship for a second, players who have been prolific deck builders who are used to kind of building their own stuff, they have a better understanding of the game overall. So totally agree with you, Chris. All right, well, players are on the same page here. Both players queuing in with Paladin for this match point here. Um, Amaz, I, I thought I actually dropped the muster, but that would have been strange. So uh, it just seemed like a... Seem like a keep there. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Divine Shield granting cards from both players, so it seems like they agree with you, Crib. That's a well really met. powerful mechanic in this. Now, format. it's it's less of a powerful mechanic when you don't have an actual minion to put Divine Shield on, which seems to be the problem for both players right now. Yeah. Well, well, that's the beauty of the Paladin Hero Power. It's going to give a constant stream of threats, but man, Muster for Battle, what a card. That is so important in Paladin Mirrors. Just that Life's Justice effect of being able to clear all of their hero powers for the rest of the game is so cool. Oh, no. Follow the rules. Oh, the rules have already been followed. That 1-1 one, one just becomes a 1-1. He was, one, one. He was just like, I wasn't doing anything. I was actually just already following the rules. Why are you yelling at me? All right, well, Amaz's inclusion of Seal of Champions really put, puts them in, in an extremely good position here. Uh, for Kibler to really have an impactful turn, he has to play the Cog Hammer, which feels so weak. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough to recover from a point like this. He's going to opt to play two minions instead of just dropping the pile of Shredder. Not a bad play, and uh, we'll see. He needs his Cog Hammers, yeah, like you mentioned, to kind of stabilize him. The Kings works here. The Kings actually plays around a Consecrate that Kibler, I guess, might draw, because obviously he didn't have it after that. Um, but yeah, Kings on the 1-1 actually leaves you with a 5-3 uh, and a 4-1 on the board. And that's... That's a lot to deal with. Uh, you have to consider, like, these guys are running as many as 10 big minions in their deck. 
Yeah, it doesn't leave a lot of room for spells or reactive cards that help you catch up from a losing position. But I mean, Paladin is one of the classes that does have those. There are Consecrations that work with Equalities if you draw them together. So even if Consecration isn't good on this specific turn, Kibler still li likely wants to draw it at some point because he is behind on board. And that's one of, one of the cards that can actually help you catch up. He's gonna just push a lot of damage. Whoa. That does surprise me. With uh, with as quickly as Kibler played the first Follow the Rules Peacekeeper, it seemed like it might not be too uh, uncommon to see another one here. Really like a ooh. Oh. Interesting. That's actually that's not a bad play. I think you would rather get the shield on that minion because even if the shield goes on the larger minion, you're gonna lose it to the weapon. So. In this case, essentially, Kibler is saying, I would rather lose my 1-1 one -one to the large minion of Amaz instead of my bigger minion. Now, the interesting point is, uh, Amaz, he obviously knows he's playing against a bunch of dragons. He probably knows he's playing against Ren Blackhand. Stacking a really big minion that isn't a legendary kind of removes that option. And we, we, we see Kibler actually has Ren, and he's not really going to be able to do much with it. I mean, it feels like this game is going to end without a legendary effect from Amaz's side. Yeah, how can we even be sure there's a legendary effect minion in there? I mean, it looks to me like a pretty standard aggro deck. Yeah, I lose to this all the time in rank. <laughs> I, I recognize certain key tells, like Monster for Battle and Blessing of Kings. Like, I've seen this deck before. This is not a challenge stone deck. There's just a card on turn six that I don't quite see in Amaz's hand that is all that is always, always, always in the hand of any person playing this deck on turn six. Uh, Grand wonder, wonder Crusader. What that, wonder what that card would oh, be. Grand Crusader. It's a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that was that was what I was thinking about. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Glad to help, Grim. Team player. <laughs> but seriously, though, uh, Kibler really has very few options here. It looks like he might just uh, end up going with the Shredder Hero Power, which is basically all he can do unless he decides he runs, really wants to give that uh, shield and minibot taunt. But... Yep, not too many options. He's going to be taking a lot of damage here, but I mean, luckily for him, Moss is going to have... I am sorry. Uh, much burst, but is it enough? I don't think it quite is. All right. Actually, if he attacked the shield, he was dead. <laughs> right. So, Amaz is going to be able to get a pretty good trade here, put some more damage onto Kibler. But to be fair, Amaz had a very aggressive draw, and those qualities in his hand aren't exactly helping that. You know, that's a very that's a card you want to draw when you're behind on board, not when you're ahead most of the time. So I could still see Kibler winning potentially. No. I don't believe so. Like, how does he deal with that 8 4 Divine Shield? Well, that, that is the beefiest s Silver Hand recruit I've ever seen. You deal with it the hard way, man. It's uh, a cog hammer and a dream. <laughs> now, uh, okay. I don't know. And, uh, that recruit's still pretty big. <laughs> so anything that deals one damage. Oh, is true legal. silver. That'll do it. It might, a taunt minion might come out of this one. It's about a one in 40 chance for a taunt minion. <laughs> well, Kibler's doing his magic trick with the hands, making that happen, and it does not. <laughs> All right, well, Lamaz does get that second point on the board, and in fact, it was exactly the case where he queued up with Drew.